Okay, so we are talking about D-allulose as a new product and we are learning how to market it globally. What are the variables that need to focus on for succeeding in uh, scalability of this business and sustainability of this business. It's a new product, not in the market. Sujit has brought this example in class. So we'll create a global marketing plan and what are the important variables that we need to consider for creating global marketing plan. So what we have learned so far are the three strategies to create two ingredients using and leveraging on the competencies of the team, which is people. And the three strategies we learned already are innovation leadership. So when we are selecting product, how to innovate to create the best product in terms of quality, not just the product, but all P's of marketing. So we use innovation to create the best marketing mix. Then we use innovation again to create strategy cost leadership, not just in manufacturing the product, but also in distribution of the product and making a excellent, creating an excellent consumer experience with the product. And uh, the third strategy is service excellence. So how do we deliver service excellence when we are delivering this product to the consumer? And to in order to implement these three strategies, we must create <clears throat> at the end of the day by using these three strategies, unique selling proposition over our competitors. That means have strengths which competitors find difficult to replicate. That is the one ingredient. And second thing is we create consumer connect, which is par excellence. And then if we create consumer connect and unique selling propositions over competition, we would have created a killer formula for success. And this can be done only and only if the team of people behind the business are having all the competencies required to deliver these benefits of the three strategies and create the unique selling propositions on an ongoing basis. So consistency is important. And therefore people, which is the one resource, which is part of the business, which is the most critical resource is very, very important. So through this product that Sujit has brought to the class, we are now learning how to create a successful marketing plan. So what we are first studying is, what is the innovation? What are the areas of innovation we can look at? What is the advantage this product has over the competing products? What is the total market size of artificial sweeteners? How much of that can D. allulose capture? What will be the price comparison? So we, will, we are going to compare the marketing mix of D. allulose versus the marketing mix of the competing products in order to see if we come across any unique selling propositions, any unique strengths that this product has because of which the consumers will prefer to buy this product. So the four P's that we are talking about here is the product first. So we will analyze the product, the technological, what are the advantages is it better for human body? Does it have lesser side effects as compared to the other competing products? Why would consumers really prefer to consume D allulose over the other competing products? So first area we'll analyze is this. Then we'll analyze the price. Then we'll analyze the distribution, how we will distribute in a way which is better than the competition. So product, price, place, and promotion. So in promotion, it's very important how we will, you know, position this product vis-a-vis -vis the competition. Okay. So this is what we are going to now learn through this practical case study. Okay. So over to you, Sujit. Tell us the advantages of this product vis-a-vis -vis competition. And that is what we are trying to analyze. Let's see what all information you have. If we don't have all the information, we'll go back We'll try and research that. And if we are really convinced that this product has definite advantages, least side effect, 
on the human body, then we will analyze the price. Okay. So then we'll see the production technology used. At the end of the day, what is the price at which we can market this? And whether we have an advantage in the price, because at the end of the day, consumers have to pay that price. We'll see what is the price comparison. And when you're doing price comparison, you will also have to see if you're using aspartams, because I know these, each sweetener, to get the same amount of sweetness, you may require different quantities. So when we are comparing prices, we'll have to normalize the quantity used to get the same consumer experience. Right? So that is a very critical thing. So when you're comparing prices, that is important. So that'll be the next step. Okay, so I'm basically giving you the algorithm of creating a B plan. Right? Okay. We'll not be able to do it today in these two hours, but these are the steps you'll have to take. So I'll share this recording with all of you. Get working on it. So let's see. Okay. For value proposition. Should I read out, sir? No, don't read out. It's uh, enormous potential. It's bio catalyst for the cost effective large scale production of D allulose. So, which is the bio catalyst here? We, we, we are only interested in D allulose. Okay. Okay. So this talks about maybe some other. Okay. You first tell us about the technology, how this product was discovered and etc. What are the advantages, if at all, you have? So this is the technology brief I have got, sir. So this is how to produce it. Yeah, yeah. No, I will share it. Yes. See, the lecture is being recorded. I Again, I am requesting you to keep your videos on. Harshal, Madhuri, Vivek, don't shut off your videos, please. And don't make me repeat this request again and again. It's a There's no difference between physical class beta and this class. Okay, in physical class, we'll, if you go out, you won't be there in the class. So if I see your videos are off, I don't count you in. Vivek, is this your first class, Vivek? Yes, sir. This is my first class. Did you study what we had done in the first session? Can I see your face? Yeah, Sujit. Let, let's let's sir. Let's okay. get some uh, value proposition. So it's a stable novel enzyme. So it's an enzyme, first of all. Yes. Which is the sweetness. Right? Yeah. 
this enzyme itself is sweet, which we mix with all the food, etc. Is what you are saying? How do you consume it? Answer the... This is the... Okay. That is defructose. Yeah, we convert into DLU. Okay. So, this is like a powder, crystals. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and we... what, is the, what, is the, what is the storage? We have the material safety data sheet of this? Sir, not... No... Uh, Get it. We have yeah. to approach those companies. Uh, That's fine. Approach the company. Approach it. They should have created a material. What all does material safety data sheet give you? Hmm. This this question I did there. I read it. You seen the material? Have you seen an MSDS? I'm sure you've seen. No, it. no, no, no. Okay, do one thing. Just do a Google search on your phone, uh, on your laptop. Okay. Let's see if MSDS of D allulose is available. Available, sir. Hey. अगर तुम्हार तुम लोग मेरे साथ बैठोगे ना क्लास छोड़ो कोर्स छोड़ो आई विल मेक श्योर यू गाइस बिकम मिलियनर्स इसके लिए अगर वीडियो ऑन नहीं करोगे तो बनने वाला नहीं विवेक प्लीज आई वांट टू सी योर फेस अरशद चले गए दिस वन सेफ्टी डाटा शीट विच हां हां कौन सा लेना विच अथेंटिक विच जस्ट टेक कोई मार्क वगैरह का अवेलेबल है तो दैट इज मोर रिलायबल फिशर फिशर का अच्छा होगा सर साइंटिफिक है ये फिशर साइंटिफिक का है ना इसको खोल हे विवेक गुड मॉर्निंग कैन वी सी यू आई एम ओके इफ यू आर सिटिंग इन टॉयलेट गुड मॉर्निंग सर सर लेट मी सी योर प्रिटी फेस यस गुड I recommended you use this one. If you are sitting in car and you are you bothered to sit, I am okay with your background. Don't worry about it. Okay, sir. Okay, okay we are having fun, aren't we? Yes, sir. हाँ थोड़ा थोड़ा inputs तुम लोग भी study करो phone के ऊपर मेरे को कुछ Google search करते हुए नजर आने चाहिए. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the first session that you missed, I said that chemistry is the best way to create wealth. Because not many people know it. It's very yes, simple. It's very simple. Okay, sir. This one. Ha. Abhi, abhi, abhi. Let, let's go to the first page. Che. Now, this is the material safety data sheet. I want you to all know. And this has to be read very carefully. It tells you a lot about the product. Because when you are talking about distribution, the storage conditions are important. Okay, there is a product we buy from Biocon, but it requires a cold chain. The storage has to be at minus forty degrees. Now, what if this D-allulose is a product like that, which is requiring that kind of storage condition? You know what is the challenge in marketing? राइट right? तो अब इसको पढ़ना शुरू करें ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू नो कैश नंबर्स एंड ऑल यू अंडरस्टैंड राइट फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इन इन दिस इज द पैटेंट इश्यू इन मार्केटिंग व्हेन यू डूइंग योर केमिकल्स मार्केटिंग फर्स्ट स्टडी वेदर इट्स आउट ऑफ पैटेंट इट शुड नॉट बी अंडर पैटेंट सो आई अज्यूम दैट दिस प्रोडक्ट इज नॉट अंडर पैटेंट So it is patent if it is, if it is patent then we have to take the licensing yeah so the model for marketing is in licensing out licensing so the the patent holder has to give us a license so we have to buy the right market authorization is called right we have to take the market authorization from the patent holder so then there are different revenue sharing agreements that we get into place one is that he will say okay i will sell you technology outright you pay a couple of x amount of money and now technology is yours you say i am going to now scale it up and i am going to create wealth out of it so you take all the rights for all the global markets second way is that you say okay you 
give me technology for basic minimum, but you become my partner, I'll pay you royalty. Right? So then you become royalty partner. Now, this is something that you will have to then. But how much fees you will pay for technology? How much royalty you will pay? Will depend upon your correct estimation of how much wealth you can create. And what we are learning today is the wealth creation potential through successful marketing of this product. Now, if you are having this competence you will be a billionaire, not millionaire. If you are having the competency for successful global marketing, which is not very difficult today, because I'm going to be giving you presentation on what all things have changed in the market. Okay. How you can correctly estimate what all environmental changes have come in the market which is making marketing, global marketing, very easy. Internet of things. Digital marketing. So easy to get inside the homes of people. Right? To talk about product, etc. But what is to be talked about in case of D-allulose? First, we are studying. What are the unique selling propositions? What are the unique strengths of this product? Vis-a-vis -vis competition. So, material safety data sheet comes first. So recommended use, it says laboratory chemicals use uses advised against Hey Sujit, do you read something here? Here Hmm, Madhuri, tell me what is very critical here. Yes. Sangeeta ji, aap bataiye. We this advised. Hmm, Vivek. Sujit? No idea. I don't know. Nini? Uses advised again. Ye padho jara. Okay. Uses huh? advised against food. Ye to kya raha hai? Food mein use nahi karne ka hai? Okay. Advised against food. How okay. come? Then uh, this technology itself is based. Now what it means is that they have perhaps done some toxicity studies. Okay. Okay. So the first, it's a great example. They go, I mean, Mereko to gaya, tumko aaya ki nahi. But let let us but this is an area of investigation now for you. Okay. You have to go back to the technology person who has developed the technology. You say, but yeah, I have seen material safety data sheet. Dekha hai. And in the material okay. safety data sheet, you can food mein apan isko use it in food. Okay. But go with an educated. Now we are going to go. Why it is advised against food, drug, pesticide or biocidal product use? Let us, material safety data sheet itself will give you answers. Abhi emergency telephone number. That means now this company is making this product. Okay. Fisher Scientific. Yeah. You can send an email to Fisher Scientific. You can ask them this question. Why in your material safety data sheet you have mentioned that it cannot be used in the food? They'll give you some answer. Maybe there could be some racemic mixtures here. Okay. Maybe if you do separation. Maybe one of them could be safe. That is the technology you got to get into. Okay? So, yeah, general marketing is very different from chemicals marketing. Now you are able to appreciate. And this is where is your potential to become millionaires. 
आई गिव यू टू इयर्स नॉट मोर दो साल में यू कैन क्रिएट मिलियंस इफ यू वर्क विद राइट डायरेक्शन and i am available because i am this is my passion area last whole week i told you i was going to bangalore hyderabad i have met so many phd people with 15 20 years of experience so this this country has such fantastic brains if i told you what all technology i have come across okay with people who have actually you know fantastic labs etc कभी बैठ के बात करेंगे नॉट टूडे बट लेट्स फोकस ऑन दिस लेट्स लेट्स गो एंड रीड और नीचे चलते गो टू हेजर्ड्स आइडेंटिफिकेशन दिस केमिकल इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड हेजर्डस बाय द 2012 ओशा हेजर्ड कम्युनिकेशन सो इट इज नॉट हेजर्डस ओके नेक्स्ट लेबल एलिमेंट्स सो लेबल में नन रिक्वायर्ड Hazards not otherwise classified, non-identified. Okay, page number two. See, if the chemical is hazardous, then it will impact the transportation. It requires okay. special packaging. Then your transportation will become very expensive, and that will impact your marketing ability of the chemical vis-a-vis -vis the substitutes. So remember that. Okay. So next is what. What is this? Compositioning. Composition. Component. ये तो कुछ और component आ गया इसमें. What is this component D? Psychos. Psychos. I thought this was a material safety data sheet of D allulose. Now just check the cast number of D allulose. Upper chalo. Let let's go back to the first page. Ah, see the product is wrong. Dekh rahe. Synonyms. Acha. Ah, the product is right. It's one of the two products. That means alternative. Synonyms. Synonyms. Hmm. Okay. So that means cast number is the same. Okay, so it's the same product. So D allulose and D psychos are the same products. Hazardous नहीं है, but it is not recommended for food, drug and चलो, let's go back to the second page. So component इतना है. This is weight percentage greater than ninety five percent. This must be by HPLC. Okay. Eye contact first aid में rinse immediately with plenty of water also under the eyelids for at least so ठीक है this this Will be irritating to eyes. Skin contact, wash off immediately with plenty of water. That means it is get medical attention if symptoms occur. So, not recommended to for for skin contact, inhalation. Not recommended. Actually, most of the chemicals. This is what they will write. In none of the chemicals they will say that okay, it's good unless uh, it is a cosmetic. Most important symptoms and effects none reasonably foreseeable. Notes to physician treat symptomatically. Firefighting measures. आगे चले. So there is nothing, no cause for concern under heading four. Okay. So uh, firefighting. Water spray, carbon dioxide, dry chemical, unsuitable extinguishing. No information available. Flash point. No information available. Method. No information available. Auto ignition. अब main चीज है ये hazardous तो नहीं है. But is it flammable? That is because that will also impact your distribution, distribution, packaging, right? So auto auto ignition temperature explosion no data available. अब इतनी बड़ी कंपनी ने इसको टेस्ट नहीं किया है तो मतलब it is not really inflammable. Okay, no data meaning they have tried to to create this data they will try to put fire to it. अब वो नहीं कर पाए हैं तो मतलब इट इज सेफ ओके सो लेट्स गो नेक्स्ट स्पेसिफिक हेजर्ड्स अराइजिंग फ्रॉम द केमिकल की प्रोडक्ट एन एम टी कंटेनर अवे फ्रॉम हीट एंड सोर्स ऑफ इग्निशन वाई बिकॉज नो डेटा इज अवेलेबल तो दे आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू बट दिस इज सम 
this is something that you need to investigate. Maybe see MSDS of other companies and see if somebody has this data available or you can write to this company and say that is it inflammable? Please, okay. you want to understand this. So do that also. Hazardous combustion products, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Protective equipment and measures. Okay, that's okay. Flammability NFPA. Flammability 1. You have to find out what this 1 indicates. Is it highly inflammable or it is moderately inflammable or it is non-inflammable? Right? The, the, the numbers are. So, it's got to investigate karna padta. Personal precautions. Ensure adequate ventilation. Use personal protective equipment as required. Avoid dust formation. Environmental precautions should not be released into the environment. See section 12 for additional ecological information. Wo aage aega section 12. Dekhte hai. Uh, methods for containment and clean. Hai? Abhi handling and storage. This is critical. So this impacts your packaging and distribution costs. Wear personal protective equipment, face protection, ensure adequate ventilation, avoid contact with skin, eyes, if all that is fine. Avoid ingestion and inhalation, avoid dust formation, that's fine. Storage, most important. Keep container tightly closed in a dry and well-ventilated place. Keep refrigerated. Okay. Abhi tumhare ko pata karna padega. Why they are asking refrigerate? Send an email to company. So what are the storage temperatures? Normally, ye dete hai, MSDS mein aata hai, that keep below 5 degrees or keep between 5 to 8 degrees. And from there, you can extract. Abhi, abhi refrigeration tumko karna pada hai isko. Tumne bana bhi liya. Haan. Usko distribution karne ke liye kitni cost jayegi? And how will Again. you how will you ensure that the product from the time it is produced to the time it is consumed by the consumer, it has been stored at the recommended temperature? How will you ensure? Now, what kind of problems can come up? Suppose the product has not been stored properly in transit. By the time it goes to the consumer, the consumer will receive funny taste. It would have maybe decomposed, destabilized. Some something may happen to taste. It may turn into water. It may become lumps. Right? Thank you for again bringing this. But this is what is chemicals marketing. Right? So all the critical parameters you will get in where? MSES. So, this is now an area of concern. Exposure controls. Mein. This product does not contain any hazardous material with occupational exposure limits. So, this is not a major cause of concern. We will repeat ho hai, skin and body protection. Aage chale, respiratory protection. Aage chale, hygiene measure. Physical and chemical properties. This is very important. Now, Upa chalo, nine. Ah, Varuko, Yagya, melting point Agya. High enough. Hundred nine degrees. So, not a problem. Boiling point, no information. But we flash point, no information. Matlab, nahi hoga. Okay. Flammability. Is Kuber Koi data available? Nahi hai. Doesn't look like a problem. Now, all these are actually not very difficult. You being chemists yourself, you know, all this data is not very difficult to create. They say no information available, but you can do in your lab. All these points you can do. You must do. Okay. Molecular formula is okay. Let's go down. Auto ignition temperature is very, very important from the distribution aspect. Okay. Let's go down. Stability and reactivity again. Product is stable in what conditions? And if it's not stable, if it is unstable, then it'll be mentioned here. Okay. Stable under normal conditions. 
Now, what is normal condition? Normal room condition. Normal, I mean, so there, there is no really a problem in packaging and regular transport is what it's saying here. Incompatible products, excess heat, avoid dust formation. Incompatible, strong oxidizing agents. So you have to keep it away. So your packing should be, if it is bulk packing or whatever packing, should be under vacuum. Because it gets oxidized very quickly. And you know what happens after it gets oxidized? The color may change. Right? And it will not look good. So maybe nitrogen packing, vacuum packaging, all that will be required. Hmm? It means additional cost. Refrigeration. Refrigeration bhi usne bola hai. So these are all additional costs. Yes. So the point I'm trying to make is, you see, we, as a technical person, we get excited about a new technology. Right? And that's okay. Because that's the scientist in you. But when we have to find out how much money we can make out of it, then we have to go after that into this kind of investigation. Because they directly impact the piece of marketing. That's a great concept learned. Right? Now, let's learn about the toxicity now. Ek minute, ek minute. Polymerization, is Achha, polymerization doesn't occur. Because you know, some products where the polymerization takes place, some products can explode. Right? A lot of heat can get generated. Gases can get generated. So, welcome to chemicals distribution. All these things you have to study. Toxicological information is very important for us. Why? Because it has, on the top said, not recommended for food drugs. Why it says carcinogenicity. The table below indicates whether each agency has listed any ingredient as a carcinogen. Not listed, not listed, not listed. Mutagenic effects, no information available, no information available, no information available. Other effects, the toxicological properties have not been fully investigated. Okay, now you have to contact the company for Sujit. Usko bolo, bhaiya, tumhara, ye konsa section hai? What is the number of this section? Toxicology data ka? Niche karna? Tell them in your section 11, you are yourself saying that there is no information available. Then on what basis are you saying that this product is not recommended for food and pharmaceutical use? Send out an email today. Mark me a copy. I'll send you my email. ID. I'll guide you. Yes, sir. I'll email. I'll, email. Hmm? I'll make it. Say we are looking at commercial uh, available, uh, commercial uh, commercialization of this product for a different application. You're looking at your MSDS. You have mentioned it should not be used for food and uh, drug. drug. And on what basis would, can we can we know that? Because we are we are looking at a possibility of uh, its application in food. And your toxicological section 11 says that it no is not toxic. It is not hazardous. It is not toxic. It can be stored in the normal condition. At, at one place, yes. you are saying it can be stored in normal condition. At another place, you are saying it has to be separated. We find this contradictory. contradictory. Right? So please answer this following question because we are now investigating. But before... Simultaneously look at other medical safety data sheets from other companies. Okay. Right? You do your independent research. Yeah. Yeah. Who's trying to speak, please? Okay, let's go down. Ecological information, again, no information. 
basically i'll tell you this kind of msds when i see it means the product has been there but because it was not marketable people have not really investigated it they've used it as a lab reagent chemical in the past for whatever uses in the lab for that this msds is so that means it has been transported in grams etc they've not been transported in the bulk so this is a half-hearted msds created by a very big company but they will be happy to answer your questions Disposal again is a very critical. Chemical waste generation must determine whether a discarded chemical is classified as a hazardous waste. So these are all DOT, TDG, IATA, not regulated, not regulated. That means by air you can ship. By sea, IMDG is for sea shipment. International maritime dangerous goods, IMDG. So if it is a dangerous, then it is classified under IMDG, the chemical. IATA is for <coughs> air transport. A transport. DOT, etc. is land transport. Okay, regulatory information for USA. Uh, International inventories. अब ये सब कंट्रीज में इन्वेंट्रीज आर कैप्ट नाउ यू सी ऑल दीज यूएस फेडरल रेगुलेशन सारा वगैरह ये सारा क्लीन वाटर है क्लीन एयर है एवरी केमिकल इज रेगुलेटेड वेरी स्ट्रिक्टली so remember when we talking about distributing it globally the material safety data sheet is the guiding and you have to see that you are within the laws rules etc and then the packaging is proper and then you transport it and all of that will impact your price at the end of the day so i think this is worth investigating now whether the product your innovator is saying it is sweet it can be used as sweetener he has developed the product using some bio catalyst first of all the product itself whether it is safe for human consumption please investigate at the sir can i update something yes sir this product is food safe uh, the mlda show it is not a for food safe because the, the concentration is too much higher Uh, in section uh, 40 cfr and grass notice 693 they can approve as a uh, diluent from for intake of human and use in the foods excellent due information their, yeah they are due to higher concentration they mention in that uh, section 2 sorry section 3 that's why they can uh, claim as a not uh, use advice as a not use in the food and drug pesticide fantastic thank you very very useful information I'm loving this class. Okay, so you are you are now understanding different aspects of. First, now our focus was on learning what are the unique strengths this product has as a sweetener. Right, so you will have to go back now to find out those unique strengths. So all the piece of marketing first is the product itself. After that, you'll do the price. Sujit, I don't think that will be possible in today's class. But those are some of the things that you will have to identify. Then will come the production technology. Then we'll talk talk about the cost of production. Hmm? And then we'll talk about promotion and distribution. Okay. So these are the steps. I will encourage you. all to look at the feasibility of creating wealth through the business of this product by applying all the concepts that we discussed create a b plan and let's discuss in the next lecture which is going to be physical we'll do a physical session okay okay now let's go down yes, there's something else also
this msds is created under the us laws okay so all these so europe will have their own different format every country japan will have its different format so you, you know you have to see that it fits into the format so safety health and environment all that persistent organ you know, not applicable not applicable. doesn't look like but investigated 16 care Now you see there is a creation date and there is a revision date. That means this is not the updated one. See it. This MSD date ex expired on 2021. So we need to also see an MSD which is valid as on date. So there are a lot of information that was missing. Any questions so far? No, sir. Okay, now just stop sharing your screen, uh, Sujit, so that I can share my screen. What we are, what we have learned is about the chemicals market in the first step, how we first analyze the uh, viability and what impact the nature of chemical itself has on the marketing mix, right? Now I'll share my screen. To just take you through a small present, you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is about global demand estimation variables. So, if we find that the product itself is now viable right technically the design wise the packaging wise the distribution wise the price wise and we have come to a conclusion that yes we can market it then what is what are the areas of focus what are the variables we need to focus on for demand estimation right so now what this presentation is dealing with is what are the environment, how the environment is changing, what are the disruptions happening in the environment which we can leverage on and which we need to consider at the time of demand estimation. So remember I had, again I'm going back to the same uh, basic principle which uh, I told you was that at the end of the day no matter what product we have it's consumed by some form of life it's either the humanity or the plant or the animals. Now, those six questions, first question to be answered is, why would the consumer consume the product? And there, there have to be some USPs in your product vis-a-vis -vis the competing products in the marketing mix. And if they are not, try to create them. Because without that, it will not be a marketing success. Right? So answer the most important question, why? The second most important question is who? Who will be your consumer? The third most important question is where? Where is that consumer located or lives? The next important question is how, how you will reach that consumer, right? The next question is when, when does that consumer consume the product? Right? So these six questions, out of which five are W's. Okay. And one is H, how, why, who, where. Yes, one more W is what. What that consumer is consuming today. And in what form he will consume your product. He would like to consume your product. You got it? 
So these six questions will give you a lot of insights about demand estimation, right? Then it comes to what is the total market size, how much you can penetrate, and why you will be able to penetrate, where you will be able to penetrate. So based on those estimation, how much you can plan your production. It's always the best strategy to set up an economical production site where you can compete with the competition. You have enough economies of scale and in the future you can increase the capacity. That is the best way. But how the environment is changing and how it is going to impact the product mix, that is the demand of the product numbers and how we are marketing it. Let's go through this short presentation okay so it talks about now entrepreneurship in an interconnected world what are the concepts tools etc right so what are the things that are changing we need to know which impact these six questions so if you see all the source of this data is mckenzie's research so you know it is mentioned but I must tell you, this is all from McKinsey's research, which is a very reliable research, uh, which uh, is talking about these trends, which are going to be impacting all the businesses, including what we are studying, the chemicals, including the, the product that we studied just recently. So the first thing is that is impacting where the consumers are. Urbanization. What is happening in the world? You remember the last video that you all saw? Okay, that's part of this presentation. I don't want to repeat it because we don't have that much time. I want to deliver other concepts. But it talked about who? Who are the consumers? So we're talking about 7.6, 7.8 billion population. And that said that Europe has stagnated. North and South America the numbers of people have stagnated. The growth is coming from Africa and the growth is coming from Asia. So these are the future growth markets. So that means that's where the people are going. But within these markets, all the markets, one very common thing factor is urbanization. People are moving from small villages, remote places, and they are getting organized in clusters which are now cities so most of the people are now organized in the cities urban cities so urbanization is a big uh, trend which will impact your distribution so world population is 7 billion of which more than 4 billion live in urban areas so 4 divided by 7 okay almost 60% people are in urban areas. One out of three live in slum household. So there are slums. Within the city, there are slums. So now that answers where people are located, where your future consumers are going to be located. So if we take your product, Sujit, that we discussed, this gives you some answers on where you have to focus to sell your product. Right? Another trend now, you see how the urbanization, let's go down, okay? Urbanization 2050. By the year 2050, more than two-third of the world population of 9.8 billion. By 2050, how much will be the population? From 7.8 to 7.6 to go to 9.8. That's the growth of population. Where the growth is coming from? Africa and Southeast Asia. And, and Asia, Asia, not Southeast Asia. Now, two-third of this population will be living in urban areas. Answers where you have to concentrate. Okay. Next is the economic activity, 2025. 440 cities in emerging markets. Which are the emerging markets? Again, Africa and Asia. Right? These are the emerging markets will contribute to half of the global GDP growth. Now you see the further concentration. 
Now we are looking at these 440 cities in emerging markets. So they will be contributing 50% of the world GDP. Today, world GDP is back to the pre-COVID levels around $86 trillion. Of which half of it by 2025, which is just three two years down the road, will be in 440 cities. Now these environmental insights give you answers on where to concentrate for getting your business. Now, consumption 2025, let's look at that. That is a related one. Now, 2.25 billion people will live in cities in Asia by 2025. And this is more than 50% of urban population. So, we come to 440 cities. And now we are talking about only Asia potential. Right? So these are the insights that you need to have regarding environmental analysis to determine where to go and sell and to whom you will sell. Right? Next is the China factor. Importance of China. By 2025, 46 of the 500 top cities will be in China. It's almost 10% of the top cities. Tianjin, which is the area in China, economy will be of the size of Sweden by 2025. So you see how fast China is growing. Right? So China also becomes an important target market. Emerging economies are becoming major forces. They will grow 75% faster than the developed world by 2025. Again, an answer to where you'll go to sell. The share of emerging economies in the world GDP in 2018 was one third, which will grow to half in seven years time, 2025. Again, we are talking about Af Asia and Africa. Let's look at consumer spend. Emerging markets are likely to exhibit 150% higher consumer spend. Now, who's spending? Not people like me. It's the young people. Now, whichever country has a younger population, India is, of course, on top. That's the reason why you see India is growing, right? The younger, younger population, they are the ones who are spending. So, whom you have to focus on are these people. So emerging markets are likely to exhibit 150% higher consumer spend. The reason behind that is the younger population. America is old. China is also relatively old than India. Europe is old. Africa, Asia, you will find very the median age is much lower. And the mean age is much lower. And of course, there's a pandemic effect, which uh, at that time, because this presentation I had made a little during that time, it talks about almost 620 million people exited the poverty line in past 20 years before Corona. Okay. But the effect of Corona was that all those people again became poor. So all the progress that we had made in the last 20 years was wiped out by Corona. And Corona was not the first and the last pandemic that you have seen. We'll see more pandemics. That's also predicted. Okay. So that is something which is going to disrupt the businesses. All right. Now you see the world population growth in five years. The darker, the darkest ones are the higher growth areas. Now you can see this region, including Australia, let's do more because of their immigration policy, New Zealand, etc. They are all the darker ones. And some Latin America and Central America countries are coming there, but most of them are stagnated. America is also showing darker region. Why? Because of their immigration policy. Right? So they will continue to, if whatever growth comes is from immigration. But this is where, this region is where the population is growing through new births. 
That is what the video that we saw in the last lecture told. So this basically gives you an answer on where the consumers are going to be located. Now, another aspect that you need to consider while doing your demand estimation is that the whole world is aging, right? So this talks about G20 population growth, okay? So from 300% growth in the last decade to barely keeping pace now, there's no more growth happening. And you look at 65 plus years in working age, they've almost become 2015 to 25, they've almost become equal. In the last decade, the working age was many times the old age. Now the old people is equal to the working age people. So that means there's so much of gap in the labor force, in the G20. What it means is, you will see, India is going to be exporting manpower to the world, skilled manpower. All of you will have a lot of opportunities coming your way to work in Japan, Korea. I'm already seeing a lot of PhDs from India working in Japan, Korea, which are very, very untraditional countries. Most Indians have gone only to America, UK. Okay. And the business class, etc. They've gone to Africa, Dubai and all these. But now the new trends are even Korea, Japan is importing skilled manpower from India. So if you can learn Korean or Japanese, you'll have a chance to work with some very, very innovative companies. Okay, I already meet some of them in these markets. Next trend which impacts demand estimation and also impacts are how we are going to promote our products. Is it, This is again talking about the same, same, uh, the working age population outgrew the retirement age population. Now, all these countries are going to be facing the labor shortage, basically, which I have already told you. Okay. The next trend, which is going to impact marketing mix, okay, is where, which we saw, okay, in the urbanization in, in, in the first slide, but this talks about in more details. The same thing in the picture form. Which what it talks about is countries are becoming much more urbanized. Now at the country level, if you see, city populations are growing by 65 million every year. This is average for the world. What it means is that if you only focused on cities, you would be successful. With emerging markets taking the lead, of course, with you know digital marketing now, you know that Amazon, etc., delivery solutions you can penetrate the rural markets. Now, emerging markets are taking lead 440 cities, two and a half billion people. We already studied that. 46 of the world's top cities, we studied that. Emerging economies are becoming major forces. 75%, they are growing faster. This also we did already. And I think most of this slide we covered in the first slide. Now, this, these slides just give you an idea of urbanization across the world. Okay, This is talking about Asia, 1950 to 2050. The number of people, as you see, by 2050 in urban cities are growing. So, I'll very quickly, so this is Asia. Okay, The greater red you see, that is greater urbanization. Now, you see the trends all over the world. This is Europe. Okay. This is China. This is Northern America. This is Latin America and the Caribbean. All this answers where you will create businesses. Okay. And how you will create businesses has also changed. Earlier, you could enter any country and say that, okay, this is a product brought by me. This is good for you. You buy. Now, people are saying, no, we want production to happen in our area. We want employment creation to happen in our country. 
If you sell the product in a country, the import duty is going to be high. So the business architecture is also changing for capturing the global markets. And particularly, there are global markets. You will see that there are trade blocks. So North America, South America, there's a trade block. So if you are manufacturing in Mexico, there's free trade. There's no duty. But if you are manufacturing in China or in India, when it goes to the product goes to those countries, there will be some import duty. So these business architectures are also changing. We are talking about now multiple production uh, facilities in the world to take advantage of <coughs> markets there. Because there is no import duty, if you manufacture in any of those countries which are part of the trade block, you will be able to capture higher market share. Okay. Now the next disruption is people are able to now adapt new technologies very quickly. Okay. Which is impacting digital marketing. Now you know lots of artificial intelligence and all that has come. You yourself are very used to Amazon buying Flipkart and all these. So the product that we discussed today in the class can be easily marketed on the digital platforms. Right? So people are getting used to adapting new technologies. Now this just gives you an idea of how quickly you know, of course, you, when you see your children in the family, you know, the two years old and the one years old are so comfortable with the screens and they learn so fast, four years, five years old, that I get amazed sometimes that how they know so quickly how the any application works. And so quickly they just keep on playing with their fingers on the touch screen. Even I take time to understand how and what to do, but they do very quickly. Now you look at the trends. You know, this talks about basically the number of years it took to reach 50 million users. When radio was invented, it took 38 years for radio to become 50 million users. When TV was invented, it took 13 years to become 50 million users. When iPod was invented, it took four years. Internet took three years. Facebook took one year. Twitter took nine months. And now any new chat GPT already has more than, uh, I don't know, 5 million users or 10 million users already. Okay. It will launch in November. I don't know. Has anybody experience with chat GPT? Here? Yeah? Any of you? Sujit? No, not it. I will use to be, tomorrow. I am going to hey, come chat GPT. Chat GPT go. You give your work. Yes, of, sir. Of finding all this uh, about your uh, product. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what. <laughs> See what it comes out with. Because all of you do that because it's becoming a powerful tool. Everything hey. that's there on the yes. internet. You can definitely learn in a very quick way. So I'll encourage you to use chat GPT for doing market surveys, creating reports, getting information on whatever data is available on the web. Okay. But this is a trend which will impact the digital marketing. It will impact the way you reach your potential consumers. Okay. And create volumes out of your business ideas. So please integrate and create marketing plans by integrating these trends. Aging world we have already talked about. So this uh, is basically talking about the graying workforce. One of the reasons also which is accelerating the robotics, etc. in the developed nations is this trend. Okay. And Another trend which is very, very important is that the productivity growth is not happening. It is decreasing. The human productivity is decreasing. And that's a 
matter of concern. Okay. And that's another reason why there's more and more AI based applications, etc., which are coming up. Right. So what it says is without productivity increase, GDP growth will shrink dramatically. We want GDP, we want the people to have employments, but if productivity growth doesn't take place, that will impact the businesses. So another one is the greater global connections now. Okay. When I started business, it was not, the data was not so easy. People were not getting connected internationally was not easy to find international customers was not easy. But here, if you have a product today, you can immediately plan not just for India, but international business. Okay. So that's basically it. Any questions so far? Now let us see how this will impact the business that we were discussing about. Sujit, all these environmental factors, they will impact all the P's of marketing and they will impact all those six questions, answers to those six questions. Now tell me, let's assume that you have a great product. So it fits into, it, it has some unique strengths, first of all. Let's assume that price-wise also it is competitive. And now we take the next step. You have to do the demand estimation. Using all these trends, how will we do it? I want everyone to respond to this question. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. Unless you want to get an idea on what new businesses are getting created because of all this. Okay. I have some brilliant uh, examples of some very new businesses that have come about. Very innovative businesses that have come about. What's the time? 11.10. We have time. I'll give you an example of one of these businesses. But let's go back to our case study that we have taken up. How these trends impact the marketing mix, demand estimation. How will we do, first of all, the demand estimation? Who would like to go first? We will select the population density. Mm -hmm. The top three cities, your yeah, countries. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. So we'll check the uh, the heart, uh, potential cities or potential potential geographical area where the population density is high. Mm -hmm. First point. Mm -hmm. Then we will calculate as per the techno uh, the Alidos model, we'll calculate the consumption, per day consumption of food or the industry, the food consumption industry, mm -hmm. or ice cream consumption industry. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking Hello. at first, the applications of the product. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hmm? Now applications are of two types. Okay. One is business to business. Okay. So you will identify all the industrial consumption, industrial applications. Right, and the businesses in those segments, and now the companies that will be your potential consumers. Right, so you will try to pitch it to them because this is an easier segment because it can get you volumes quickly. Yes, for going from business to consumer directly, you need to create a brand, you need to have marketing spend you have to need you need big budgets right it's like creating a brand image convincing the consumer so it's a little more expensive thing the moment you are successful in b2b section and you are able to create cash surplus you can think of b2c 
So when you you are may, mainly talking right now about Sujit is uh, both B two B B two C, right? So B two C marketing will create some advertisements. You'll have to, you know, free sampling. You have to do a lot of things. But if your product is already in B two B segment, what it what does it do? It creates credibility. You can tell the consumer you are already consuming it as a part of the ice cream. All I'm telling you is now consume it in the tea, in the coffee. So the first challenge, the marketing challenge is credibility creation. So based on this challenge of credibility creation, you will decide your consumers. And once you have B2B successes, Let's say you create one success. To create second success becomes easy. Because you already have now the reference of the first. Right? So the marketing challenge is first credibility creation. For credibility creation, you have to use the 3 to 1 principle. You have to tell the customer what are the unique strengths your product has vis-a-vis -vis the competing products. And you have to create the consumer connect of the highest quality with that consumer. If it is a B2B consumer or B2C consumer, these two things you have to create. And once you have the first success and you have created a great consumer experience and you are ready to give that reference to the others, then you create second success, then you create third success, then you create fourth success. So first challenge is credibility creation. Once the credibility is created, the second challenge is referenceability creation. So you have to create number of references of satisfied consumers, whether it is in B2B or B2C. Right? And having done that, after that comes scalability creation. So now the numbers are increasing. As the numbers increase, your deliveries must be on time. The demand is going to come. Repeat demand is going to come. And people are not going to wait for you to deliver. Your product has to be available. So after credibility creation, referenceability creation, third you have to do is scalability creation. That means your production line has to expand as the markets are being planned and the markets are responding. There should not be shortages in the market. Now, after addressing this scalability aspect, the last, the fourth one is sustainability creation. Now, when you are doing sustainability creation, that means you want now whatever consumers have come into your accounts, they are repeat consumers. You are not losing your consumers. And if they are trying to go to your competitor, Competing product, they come back to you because there is a unique strength that you deliver. It could be in any of those pieces in marketing. And if there is a service excellence that you are following, I can tell you, even if your consumer goes to the competing product, he will miss you, he'll miss your service, he'll miss the consumer experience, and he'll come back to you. Isn't it? So the marketing challenge. After the demand estimation, by considering all the environmental changes, technology integration, doing physical and digital marketing and getting into markets, by answering those six questions, comes down to sustainability. And sustainability can be created only and only if one very critical ingredient you have designed and built into your business architecture, and that is respectability creation. That means whichever way you are creating the consumer experience, that is generating respect for you in the market. Without respectability creation, consumer connect will never happen. Now, there will be incidents in the market. There will be shortages in the market. There will be maybe any, every challenge that you face will be an opportunity. How an upset consumer comes to you? How sometimes you will fail? Because obviously every company fails, but it is how they handle the consumer grievances. How they handle the customer grievances. 
Now, this is where I'm saying consumer is different from customer. Your distributors are your customers, but your end person who's consuming the product is a consumer. Sometimes your distributors will be upset. Why? Because you've not been able to deliver on time. And if you remember the three to one strategy, which has said that everything we are going to be delivering through the people who are associated with your business architecture. You're talking about three strategies, innovation, strategy, cost, leadership, and service excellence. You're talking about creating unique strengths vis-a-vis -vis competition and an amazing consumer connect using these three strategies. But at the end, you have said that the most important resource you have is your people. And these people are going to be delivering creation of those unique strengths in your business vis-a-vis -vis competition on a consistent basis. Right? And therefore, your focus as an entrepreneur, as a business promoter, should be on people. And these people have to deliver the consumer excellence on a sustainable basis, day to day, hour to hour, whether it is a satisfied consumer or it is an upset consumer. You have to make sure that what you are delivering as a consumer experience brings that consumer back to you, brings that customer back to you. And he loves doing business with you more than he loves doing business with your competition. And that is the eventual marketing challenge. If you do that, your sustainability is assured. And in order to do that, you have to remember that every person associated with your business, whether he is your employee, whether he is your supplier, whether he is your stakeholder, whether he is your, you know, uh, customer takes pride in being associated with you. And if he's your customer, he becomes your salesperson after having the consumer experience. And that is the marketing challenge. Once you are creating your customer into your salesperson who starts referring you, your business starts getting exponential growth. And that is eventual marketing challenge. That once a customer becomes a referral, becomes your business promoter. He should say, oh, I am amazed with this company. I would like to recommend that you buy that. They should be able to fight whether your company product is better with someone who says your competitive product is better. He should be able to fight for you passionately. And if you can accomplish all this, which can be made possible if you focus on creating credibility first, creating referenceability first, creating sustainability, creating scalability, and creating respectability on a consistent basis. Okay. So, go back to the case study. Let's create a global marketing plan for this product using these concepts. Okay. And in the next session, I want everyone to bring some inputs. Okay. And we do this practical business. And if we can come up with something viable, feasible, let's plan this business. Who stops us? Okay, Sujit. Any questions? Okay, if there are no questions, I'll use this time. I'm always greedy for time. I want to give you example of people from campuses in America. Who have created billions of dollars worth of businesses. Younger than you or your age, I don't know, but almost not, not older than you, not my age. Okay, so I'm just going to end today's session by giving you a unique example of how technologies are getting built into new businesses. Okay, so I have a business in the fashion industry, I have a business in the food industry. Which one would you prefer? We stick to food. Okay. 
Okay, let me see which one is that. Yes, where we're going. Yeah. Not that hard to guess. Sweet green. Woo Sweet green. Worship by millennials and Gen Zers. Oh, it's about to give me a Hollywood ball. Oh. Dutifully wait in lines around the block for their locally grown, celebrity chef inspired, premium priced salads. Is salad a hot, trendy, growing category? Oh. Absolutely not. When you take one of those big established yeah. things that everybody already eats and you elevate, or you innovate around that category, yeah. it can create growth in what is otherwise a pretty flat marketplace. Gwen Paltrow's company yeah. and Martha Stewart have endorsed the brand. And Selena Gomez, Catherine McPhee, Kendall Jenner, Cory Booker, and Malia Obama are all customers. There's a big movement of people connecting more deeply with their food. We were at uh, the right place at the right time. In the ever-competitive fast casual dining category, sweet greens become a unicorn valued at over $1 billion. If I had told you 25 years ago when Starbucks only had a few locations that someday it would be a global phenomenon or Chipotle, nobody would have believed that you know Starbucks would now be worth $60 billion and Chipotle worth $16 billion. But that's what's happened. And so that's what we deal with, with uh, sweet greens. So has sweet green found the new sweet spot in America's palate? And will it become the next big thing? Sweet green was started 11 years ago by three seniors at Georgetown University who met in an entrepreneurship class. We were sick of eating at the same places. None of them made us feel that good. The most delicious food, the coolest food was all the least healthy. And we wanted to solve that problem. Live the sweet life with us, you know? The one thing they all had in common, they were the children of immigrant entrepreneurs. And like their parents, they wanted to run their own businesses. The very first menu uh, we actually made in my co-founder, Nick Stormroom, uh, and we even had these little, you know, anonymous surveys people could fill out. The group raised $300,000 from 50 investors, mainly family and friends. And in 2007, three months after graduating, they opened the first Sweet Green. It was a 560 square foot shack near the Georgetown University campus, and the team had to install everything from scratch. It had no plumbing, it had no electricity. We really had no idea what we were doing. But people kept coming back. Within a year and a half, Sweet Green opened two more locations in D.C. and Maryland. By the time they made it to New York with store number 20 in 2013, they had raised over $35 million. You think there's a real chance to build Sweet Green into a, a national brand and maybe someday a global brand? And that's exactly what started happening. Core to Sweet Green's business model has always been its direct relationship with farmers. The first thing we do when we do come to a new city is connect with the local farmers and producers and build that supply chain. So every city has its own set of different farmers, producers, and growers. It's See how in a business like that, you create a unique strength through innovation in supply chain, okay? In every city, they are going to the nearby farmers. So that means the distribution cost, they're already captured. Strategic cost leadership getting created by reducing your cost of transportation. Easy task and was a risky goal for such a large scale. Many, but not all, are organic. Consumer packaging is compostable, and foods like steelhead, while less known, are compostable packaging, <laughs> unique strength. Okay, creating consumer connect, right? <clears throat> Offered in lieu of less sustainable ones like salmon. The menu changes seasonally and varies slightly by region. Sweet green has been criticized for its prices. And for attracting a... It's not cheap, Mark. Once you have a unique strength, once you have identified that you're better than your competition, you're not selling cheap. It's a diverse crowd. The company says prices have gone up over the years to increase wages and benefits for its employees. So I think I'm going to go get some sweet green for dinner because I'm on my own for dinner. In yesterday land... Consumers might have wanted a Rolex watch or some other badge product. Now food is a new badge product, the new rage, if you will. It used to be generations spent a fair amount of money on apparel, and that was sort of a badge. And today food is a badge. 
for six. See, addressing the marketing trend where people are looking at healthy food now, people are more and more sensitive to the health, right? Identifying this trend in the market is very important. So what product we discussed also today, Sujit, if you can come out with that, this is all, you know, this is having least impact on your body, on your, you know, that is where the challenge is. People will be able to pay extra price also, okay? Just relating to what we did in the class. Years, Sweet Green put on an annual music festival called the Sweet Life Festival with a lineup that included Kendrick Lamar, Solange, The Weeknd, and Time. But the company called it quits in 2017, due in part to festival fatigue and declining customer numbers. Sweet Green also teamed up with Kendrick Lamar on a shirt and salad in honor of his song. Creating credibility by using the celebrities, right? What we just learned. The company collaborates with celebrity chefs, including David Chang, Nancy Silverton, Mark Fitman, and Dan Barber to develop new menu items. The key to attracting and maintaining a customer. A new concept, but you take celebrity chefs to create recipes around the critical materials that you are sourcing, which are organic in nature from local farmers. <clears throat> you are creating not just credibility, but very unique strengths by capturing the trend of health in the market and then creating volumes. Base is a combination of consistency and spontaneity. Consistency means I deliver an exceptional product and I do it again and again and again. Spontaneity means I'm changing things up. The challenge for brands is making spontaneity mixed up somewhat so that it's not predictable. Otherwise, the high user, the one who's highly frequent, uh, gets bored with it. Sweet Green now has 91 restaurants in eight states, in addition to a corporate delivery program called Outpost, currently at 25 WeWorks and 75 B2B corporate delivery programs and other companies. In November 2018, Sweet Green became the first ever restaurant unicorn. The $1 billion valuation after receiving a two. $1 billion is 8,200 crores. Look at the age of these guys in five years. If they can do it, you can do it. Sujit? $100 million All of you. financing round led by Fidelity Investments. Other investors include restaurateurs, Danny Meyer and Daniel Ballou. They didn't have money. They raised $300,000 from 50 family and friends first. Created credibility about the product created referenceability of the first small store and then multiplied. And then the money came in after that. Her Whole Foods $300,000. Rob and former AOL executive Steve Case and Ted Leonis. The total equity raised now is $365 million. The company says it plans to eventually go beyond just salads and bowls and plans to add more cities and locations to its roster. The key will be, can they make that supply chain transparency story work in the U.S. and internationally without growing so quick that they outrun the supply chain? Today, over 50% of Sweet Green's business happens digitally. You know, the things that we do see creating growth. Digitally, all the environmental trends that we saw, which were the disruptions, they are integrating technology. See now. It's the fast casual space in general. Uh, you know, digital ordering, delivery, as more and more consumers actually want to consume the food at home. The company plans to go further with blockchain. By leveraging blockchain, we will know at any given moment exactly where our food came from. When it Traceability of what you are eating using blockchain, right? How unique strengths are being created, you see that? pick and when it got to us. And not only will we know, we'll be able to serve with that information to our customers. This technology, which is said to grow rapidly in the agricultural sector over the next five years, could help prevent outbreaks like the romaine lettuce E. coli outbreak in California in 2008. Tonight, the head of the FDA says the romaine lettuce responsible for that outbreak that has sickened dozens of people, likely started in California. Sweet Green is now cashless nationwide. The company made the switch in 2017 for both efficiency and robbery prevention. But the concept of cashless stores has sparked debate and even been banned in some states. The company also hopes its technology will give consumers a more personalized experience. Over time, as we start to get to know. Using payment gateways, going cashless, 
do, and you're able to share information, whether that be your 23andMe or other sort of microbiome data with us, we're able to then curate menus based off of your preferences. Time will tell whether this technology will put... Making it interactive. You can make your own menu and you can... Okay, so you can create your own products also now with the use of technology. Being ahead of the pack or whether that's even what consumers want or need. While other things will change, like our restaurants, the way in which we serve food, our mission will never change. As we get bigger, the opportunity also gets bigger, and we're just getting started. Okay, so much for today. Let's end the class. But I want you to now, what we learned today, demand estimation. Capturing that demand by utilizing all the principles of success in marketing, right? So let's now apply these concepts on the case study. Let's continue with that in the next session, right? And also understand some more concepts and see how we can actually create a global marketing plan. Okay. Any questions? I'd like you to. Just put your feedback on the chat box today. I'll stop sharing because without that, I don't want you to go. Uh, how did you like the session? How you will apply this session in your actual life? Huh? Let's get your feedback on the chat box. Thank you. Before you leave, just put in one line, two line there. Any improvements you'd like to have, I'd love to know. Let's have your feedback. After putting in your feedback, you can leave. Then I'll record this session and I'll make the copies available also. So today I will email the email the letters. Email to the, the Fisher. Yeah, please do. Whatever we decided, do. Do, it, do it. Okay. We are going to actually practice what we learned. Okay. okay. All, none of these concepts are in any book. Huh? So don't ask me, okay. sir, which book to read. No, 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 sir. My, I don't believe. <laughs> this is what I have been practicing and will success. Okay. Jain, Jain, sir. If you put in your uh, feedback, just you can leave, uh, Harshal, no problem. If you are wanting to write something more, welcome. And Madhuri, you too. Are you there, Madhuri? Yes, sir. Okay, you can just put in your feedback. I'll encourage you also to think of any business idea. This, this session that we have had today, you can use.
Okay, I'll end it.